before you start criticizing me, Michael Jones, you have to read Logos Rising. In my opinion, this is one of the most important books of the 21st century. St. Albert the Great is, is in particular, he's, he, he's one of the few saints who gets the title The Great, which is very interesting because, uh, you know, you have St. Leo the Great, St. Gregory the Great, sometimes Pope St. Nicholas the Great is called the Great as well. Uh, modern devotion to John Paul II sometimes calls him the Great. But Albert the Great is very interesting because he's really the OP, speaking of OPs, he's the OP, who the Dominican, who really brings Aristotle back into the West. And very controversially, because Aristotle was obviously pagan, pre-Christian. And he and then his disciple, St. Thomas Aquinas, were quite controversial. They were kind of the progressives in, in a good sense. They were progressives in a good sense at this time. So they're bringing Aristotle to bear upon the scholastic tradition at the time. And one of the things that makes St. Albert very great is that he's really one of the big scientists. He's a big, huge scientist. Michaela Harrison, I, I think that's the reason for her putting this globe here in his depiction. Um, but one of the things you can read, what my favorite, really my my favorite text from E. Michael Jones is Logos Rising. I know, I know some Catholics don't like E. Michael Jones. I understand you don't have to agree with everything he says, but you really, before you start criticizing E. Michael Jones, you have to read Logos Rising. In my opinion, this is one of the most important books of the 21st century. I, I mean, I'm I'm willing to say that. Uh, at least, you know, we're in 2024. So I mean, one of the most important books of the first quarter of the 21st century right here, Logos Rising. You really need to buy this. Uh, I should mention too, he just came out with, um, he just came out with uh, second edition of Libido Dominandi too. A very, very important text as well. And it's, it's called Libido Dominandi, Sexual Liberation for Political Control. So it's all about how the enemies of Christ have used pornography for political control. And they've done this since the French Revolution. And, and the, the um, painting on the front is obviously Delilah and Samson. So, the, you know, this is, not, this is nothing new, really. Nothing new, but it's become increasingly important to face this in the modern period. But anyways, Logos Rising, in this text, there's a chapter called The Beginning of Science. And what's so fascinating about this? I'm not. I'm not a very good, not very good scientist myself. So I, I, I was. But this was. This was written in in uh, plain enough language, so that me not being very good at science could really understand it. And what's amazing is that he really talks about. He talks about the Mohammedans and the Moha how the Mohammedans, they translated Aristotle. Because the Syriac Christians, because the Mohammedans had invaded the Persian Empire, they'd taken over the Persian Empire, the Persian Empire had fallen, never to arise again. And they had all this bureaucracy, which was filled with the Syriac Christians, and the Syriac Christians translated the Greek logos, that is Aristotle, Plato, all the, the Greek learning, they translated it into Arabic. And then, so that was brought to bear on the Mohammedans. This caused a huge controversy among Sunni Islam because it, it led to a, um, a movement called the Mutazilites, and they applied logos. They applied Greek logos, which is they basically applied Greek logic, basic logic, basic metaphysics to uh, the Quran, to Sunni, the Sunni Islamic tradition. And it caused a huge controversy because they realized that there were all these contradictions in the Quran that didn't make sense. And... This is the, the figures of Averroes and Avicenna. They're the ones who passed down Aristotle in Arabic, which is also translated into Latin. So it gets transmitted via the Syriac Christians, Syriac from Syriac, taking the Greek into Arabic and then into Latin. But there's also other transmissions, not through the Arabs, but that's how that transmission of Aristotle took place to a large degree. And uh, this man named El Ghazali, and I, it's funny, I always remember, speaking of 1111, 
I always remember his birth year because or death year because he died in 1111. So 1111 that year, he died in that year. But this is this shows you where where the Arabs were at with Aristotle because that it's only in the 1200s. Uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas dies in 1224, and I think Saint Albert actually out, outlives him actually because um, Saint Thomas died in sort of a freak accident uh, in God's providence on his way to the Council of Leon too. But what Saint Albert does, so the Mohammedans. The, the point is the Mohammedans cannot use logos. They can't use it because it destroys their religion. And Al-Ghazali, he writes, uh, he writes a, a work called The Incoherence of the Philosophers. And he just utterly destroys and dismisses Avicenna and Averroes and thereby destroys Greek logos and any place that Greek logos could have in the Islamic tradition, at least the Sunnis. The Shias are a different story. The Shias actually do take uh, logos, and this is something that E. Michael Jones has dealt with a lot of Shia stuff, but the Shia are really different than the Sunni in this sense. So El Ghazali causes Greek logos to be just utterly dismissed and destroyed, and there's no, uh, there is no tradition of logos that gets integrated into the Islamic tradition. Now, total side note, but also related to Dr. Jones, is the fact that Maimonides, aka Rambam, Moses Maimonides, who is the Jewish scholastic, in contrast to the El Ghazali, Maimonides actually does take logos and he does integrate it into rabbinic Judaism. And this is telling, I think, because it shows that there is a, a integrated cultural uh, uh, artifact of logos that really comes from the revealed logos, which is divine, in the Old Testament. And, it, and it, it allows that tradition to be integrated into rabbinic Judaism. Now, not without controversy, but the point is, this is totally different than what Al-Ghazali did. So um, what happens is Aristotle gets transmitted over to St. Saint, Saint, uh, Albert the Great and St. Thomas. And E. Michael Jones shows in his chapter, this is chapter seven, the beginning of science of Logos Rising. He shows how the very basic metaphysical uh, philosophy of Greek logos was necessary to create science. You, in terms of developing the scientific method, because you, it's all about cause and effect. You have to understand that there are secondary causes in the universe. There's the first cause, which is God Himself, but then God creates the universe with certain laws, and they have cause and effect, and they they function based on certain principles and certain logos, logi. And the Mohammedans rejected all that. But the Christians understood it and they applied it and they created the development of science. So Christians developed the scientific method. And this is what ultimately creates the, the downfall of the Mohammedans. Because later on, when the Ottoman Empire is, is knocking on Europe's door in the late 1600s, 1683, 1697, Battle of Zenta, September 11th, again, by the way, the, the Turkish Empire just has to admit defeat because Western Europe is just so much more advanced technologically, culturally, all the different things. And it's because of the development of science. So all is all, and it all goes back to St. Albert the Great, who helps to develop this, this, this proto scientific method. So St. Albert the Great is, we can certainly call him great because he helped to defeat the Mohammedans. It took another, you know, 400 years, but developing the scientific method was the, the key difference.